you hear that? I don't know, it's really creepy. It's been a while since we've recorded. It feels really, really weird, especially to be... No, okay, so... <laughs> So we've decided for every country that we go to, we're gonna do like a top 10 things to do in that country. Can you put off the top 10 things to do in Disneyland? Top 10 things. 10 things to know before you go. Things to know before you go. That's why I laughed at that. <laughs> we're not gonna spend too long on them just because they can be super boring. It's just gonna give you tips before you go. So let's get into it. We're not gonna do them in order. Usually people do them one to 10. So we're just gonna do them anyway. That doesn't make any sense. 10 things and they won't be in order. This is it, okay. Right, I'll say it again. List off 10 things and they won't be in order. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Until the end. Mm. <sighs> this is a nightmare. So we are gonna. <laughs> what do I say? First up, we have. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> we have. Food. Italy is like the home of food. If you want to go and taste some good food, go to Italy. Definitely had our fair share of pizza, pasta, a lot of drinks like wine, Aperol spritz, gelato. Oh my gosh, gelato was so yummy over there. It just felt really rich um, and there was like a million different flavors. So definitely when you're in Italy, go on a food tour. We have a video up in some of the cities that we're in and we found it a really good way to kind of see the different parts of Italy that we wouldn't have seen. It before. brought you to a load of different parts of the... Like the nooks and crannies of the city. Yeah the, yeah, the more local areas of the city. So go check them out. So next up is just the general sites of Rome. From the Colosseum to the Trevi Fountain to the Spanish Steps, there's so much to see in Rome. We tried to see all the big tours spots of Rome in one day and it just wasn't possible <laughs> at all. No. My love, it's just a little bit happier, you're just very dull. <laughs> we tried to cram everything into just one day but there's so much to see in Rome considering it is literally just like an open air museum. Something I did really really want to add though is that some of these sites look even more incredible at night especially the Colosseum and the Trevi Fountain. We ended up booking a hotel right outside the Trevi Fountain just because it looks so incredible at night. At that hotel it had like the most incredible rooftop bar where we ended up having drinks and just spending the entire night there looking over Trent Fountain. Number three is the hot springs in Tuscany. Oh my gosh, they were so incredible. It was it. it was exactly like a snapshot. Oh my god. Eek. It was exactly like we were in an Instagram photo. It was amazing. There is a good few different hot springs in Tuscany. You can go to them all if you wanted, but we just went to one. I think the name of our one was Cascate del Molino. If you've seen our actual video from the hot springs, you'll see that we still haven't learned how to pronounce that. No, I'm sure I'm close. So really different, really unique, and something to definitely see initially. But make sure to go in the morning just after sunrise because the place gets absolutely packed. Yeah. Number four is the Tuscan countryside. I think it's something really different. And if you are only going to see cities in Italy, like Rome, Milan, what's under sea? <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Really? Rome, Rome Milan. Milan. Think you've been there. Naples? Uh, Florence. Okay. Like Rome, Milan, Florence. If you're just gonna go see them, we definitely recommend going to the Tuscan countryside as well. Just see a different version of Italy. I think it was really unique. I fell in love with it. Yeah, I it was incredible. It we definitely would recommend getting a car though, because that's something we didn't do. Yeah. So we only got to see like a snippet of the Tuscan countryside. So get a car and go through like the small towns of Tuscany. And there's also a lot of unique accommodations that you can stay in there as well. We ended up renting out our very own castle, <laughs> which I thoroughly enjoyed. <laughs> that is it there. So definitely go to the Tuscan countryside, get yourself a castle. If you are actually interested in going to the same like castle we went to, we have a video editing it and the name, you'll be able to see it clearly there. <laughs> so go check that video out. Next on our list is Pompeii. So we've all heard of Pompeii. It's been in the school books for years. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I'm not a big history buff kind of person. Megan is. Not really. I kind of just enjoy yeah, the history. <laughs> yeah. But I really, really thoroughly enjoyed Pompeii. Like, sure. it is really like going back in time. Yeah. Where you, the way you can, everything is just frozen time, you can see everything. It is extremely sad, especially when you get to the parts with the bodies and everything. But. It was so, so interesting. One thing we were very lucky to experience is we went in October 2020 where it was just completely empty because of the pandemic. We were very lucky to experience it in... Empty. There was like 10 other people yeah. w within the site and us. And so. some of them were personal guides. Yeah. 
They've done extremely well to preserve something that happened so, so long ago. We thought it wasn't that long ago. No, <laughs> but it was, it actually was. It was like, it's like nearly 2,000 years ago. Is that right? Yeah, it's exactly 2,000 years in 2048. So coming in at six no, is... No, 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 that's too cringy for me. I don't like that. No. <laughs> coming in at six. Coming and... in at number six. Okay. Number six. What actually is number six? I'm Alfie. Uh, did it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing? Listen, I'm going to see it when I, I edit know, the video. I'm absolutely. <laughs> you are so <laughs> immature. Number six. Did wrong. Want to visit. Post town. Come on! Okay, 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 okay. Number six is the Amalfi Coast. A couple of things before we say anything about the Amalfi Coast is if you're gonna do the Amalfi Coast, rent a car or a bike or a bike or a scooter or anything and make sure that you're a good driver because the roads there are extremely so windy. windy, extremely narrow, and they're right on the cliffside. Mm. And buses that we took which we regret taking because we felt so sick because they were so windy. Take up most of the road, so when you see a bus coming around, you're kind of screwed. But when you get there, it is just incredible. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see the famous Positano. We didn't get to see as much as we had like on the Amalfi Coast because of the bus and how long it took to get there and the amount of time we had until the last bus left. Didn't plan it very well. So yeah, just plan we didn't plan it very well. Point. Plan it in advance or just rent a car. Once you rent a car, you're fine. Number seven is one of my favorites, walking around the streets in Venice. There's so many different streets in Venice and a lot of them are dead ends or you walk around the corner and it's something that you've not seen before. The best thing to do in Venice is to literally get lost. The amount of times we walked around the different streets and ended up on like a little mini private pier and we felt like we had it to ourselves. And um, obviously the downside to that is when you're getting lost and you actually want to find one place like St. Mark's Square, you, you really you get really lost. Can't find it's it. like it's <laughs> like a big human maze. Yeah. But it's pretty and it's so romantic. So just <laughs> So just walk around and see, can you find any hidden gems? Next we have riding a gondola in Venice. This didn't let us down at all. It was something that we wanted to do the moment we got in Venice. It was completely worth it, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. The majority of the gondoliers, um, is what they're called, the people that row the boats, charge the same. So there's like a flat rate of 80 euro. That's whether there's two people, four people, six people, it's 80 euro fluffy. And if it's like past 6 p.m. or something like that, it's 100 euro because it's more romantic at night. <laughs> we recommend getting it at sunset. We came out of one of the narrow streets just as the sun was setting over the Rialto Bridge and it was like the most perfect time. One thing about the gondola is, now this is, we're not recommending this and we're not saying you don't <laughs> do this, but if you're daring, like he, is, Fionn actually asked our gondolier, do you mind if I row the boat? And he did, he let him. Now I was petrified because the boat was very rocky, so if you're not into rocky boats, don't let the person you're with row the boat. But if you're daring and you want to chance your arm and ask your gondolier, can you row the boat? He was very nice. Tea break. <laughs> Tea for one. <laughs> What's now? What number are we on? <laughs> um. <laughs> You did not do what I think you did. You're welcome. What are we on? I don't know. We can't count past five, so. So number nine is the classic shopping in Milan. There is a million and one shops in Milan from high street to kind of like high end shop. There's something for everyone. And there's one really famous area called Galleria Vittoria Emanuele a Milano. Thank you, thank Yay. you. <laughs> um, all your really high-end brands, so if you have a bit of Dalla to spend, Please go there. Don't say that. <laughs> They're just fun, it's fun to visit, not to buy. <laughs> so if you're looking to treat yourself, go there. You won't um, see us there. Our whole experience with Milan was just a little bit dampened. Yeah. If you've seen our first video, you'll know that it was a nightmare from the day we started, and it was actually the very first time we started recording. If you've not seen that video, we'll leave a link below, and then also there's a playlist where you can like watch from the beginning. You can binge watch them through your binge quarantine. Watch. But aside from that, the shopping in Milan is definitely worthwhile. So take a trip to Milan if you want to treat yourself. And lastly, number 10 is Manarola. So you probably haven't heard of Manarola, but you've most likely seen all the colorful towns that you see on Instagram Everywhere. and everything. Like Cinque Terre, Rio Gemore, eh, oi, oi, eh? Rio Gemore. Eh. 
Rio de More. So Manarola is basically one of those towns just like five minutes from Rio de More. If you do visit those towns, there's a train that just goes through all those towns. Just make sure you stop off at Manarola. Go to the viewpoint, go to the main bar up on top of the viewpoint. When you're in Manarola, make sure you do stay there until the end of sunset because oh my gosh. we saw by far the best sunset we've ever seen. It, it didn't was, feel like we were in Europe at all. It, it was, was like amazing. it was like that red, orange, purple it sunset that you see. Oh my gosh, stunning! So it was good. incredible. We 100% will be going back. That is our favorite, and that's why it's number 10, and that's where we're gonna finish the video. <laughs> In today's, we're actually going to a new country in Europe and it did not go to plan. It did not go well. No. So stay tuned for that and we will see you in the next video. Bye bye. Bye. Hi guys, welcome to my vlog. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on my boyfriend. We're going to the classic challenge of he does my makeup and I do No, okay, goodbye.